Okay. All right. Well, I am here today with my friend Judy, who has so graciously joined me to talk about a topic that I think many of us can relate to and many of us have dealt with. And it's a topic called decluttering through grief. And I think a lot of us, when we are going through grief, decluttering is something that might not be at the top of our minds, but it's actually something that I have found working with many clients and meeting people like Judy, I have found that this is a way that we actually can process our grief when we are ready. So Judy, I just wanna start off by saying thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me today. It My is, pleasure, Rose. I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you agreed to it because I know this isn't necessarily an easy topic. Um, but we're going to start actually by talking just about how our paths crossed and how we got to know each other. I met Judy three years ago when she came up to Dayton, where I live. She lives in Cincinnati. She came up to Dayton for a book signing when my book came out, my my first mm -hmm. book, Minim Less Minimalism for Real, and she came to the Wright Memorial Library, I believe, in Oakwood, and I got Correct. to sign her book. So Judy, maybe tell us a little bit of background on how you decided to come up and meet me for that event. Well, I, I am a widow, and I've and been in the process of decluttering and things like that. So I've read three different books on minimalism. I read um, Mary Kondo's, and I read a book, two young men from the University of Miami who wrote this book. And I read your book, Rose, and your book made the most sense of all the three that I read. And I embraced it because I do agree with you that things should be both useful and beautiful when you're going through your house and you're deciding what you wanna do with things. And so I loved your premise. And um, I started doing more decluttering and so forth. And then just recently, we invited you to talk to our admins um, at work. And that was a wonderful experience as well. Well, thank you. I had a great time talking to all of you and um, just such good energy. We were supposed to be talking in person, but if it's coronavirus time, so we were talking through WebEx, right, right. Um, but it was still wonderful to to talk with all of you and and that actually was sort of the catalyst for the talk that we're having today because at the end of my talk to your group I opened it up for questions and you asked me about paperwork you said you know I've struggled with paperwork I have all this paperwork in my basement and I I, I just can't bring myself to deal with it and I said well Judy because I, I knew that you had my book because I'd met you at the, the book signing I said I know you have my book and there's a whole chapter on paper and you said well I've read your book twice and each time I skipped that chapter. <laughs> so I said, all right, mm -hmm. your homework is simply to just read that chapter and then you don't have to do anything else, but I want you to read it. Mm -hmm. And can you kind of tell us what happened from that conversation? Right. When I was talking to you, Rose, um, at our admin event, um, you had sparked something inside me because I've been going through my house for you know, a couple years now and going room by room and closet by closet and drawer by drawer, but I could never get through my paperwork. And like I said, I did read the book twice and I skipped those chapters. And when you were giving me hints, all of a sudden I had like an Oprah aha moment because you were talking about holding on to things. There's like a reason underneath. And my aha moment was that my mother who uh, recently passed away, all her paperwork is downstairs, as well as my deceased husband's paperwork is downstairs. And I thought, oh my gosh, that is why I cannot do the paperwork downstairs right now. So I took your advice and I went home. Um, and that weekend, I read the chapters three times, the one on decluttering paperwork. And I just ruminated on it, like you suggested, and I just thought about it. The entire weekend and it is such an easy premise like on Sunday I thought you know I can do this because it's very easy it's the raft it's read action file or trash and I thought you gave me the confidence to say I could do this now you know you had to overcome like your feelings and and then I started 
and I did it like 30 minutes a day. One thing good about the pandemic, I'm stuck at home. And so every day I declutter or do something for 30 minutes and I walk for 30 minutes. So I'm on a, a, a schedule and I did my paperwork 30 minutes a day. And then I got to my mom's box because I was going to leave it. And I said, no, I'm feeling good. And it's such a relief when I got through all my paperwork rows and now my basement is real tidy. I have a two drawer file cabinet, everything's in files and it's labeled. And also another thing I did, which I think was real helpful, you had said that you should have your files that you use quite often close to you. So yeah. I bought a little storage container and I have it in my kitchen on the counter. It's very pretty, but I have the files that I use all the time in there. So when I come in with my mail, if I need to file something, it's there. So I don't even have to go downstairs. Those are my more permanent files like taxes and things like that. So, um, but it was amazing. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> well, I am so proud of you yeah. as well. I mean, that's a really big thing. I mean, most people avoid paperwork anyway. Mm -hmm. People don't want to deal with their paper. For most people, it's not fun. I'm like the odd person who actually right. loves to dig into people's paperwork and make sense of it. Um, I'm very interested in that aha moment, that Oprah aha. Mm -hmm. Can you talk mm -hmm. a little bit of, more about what that was like and that, that realization that the, re mm -hmm. the reason you were actually avoiding the paperwork, because it wasn't because you weren't mm -hmm. capable of it. Right, right. Because I know, Rose, when you were talking to our group, you were saying there's a reason. We have sentimental value. We attribute to things our, there's an underlying reason why we can't get to something. And then you just have to reason it out in your head. And, and as you were talking and explaining things about um, what you've used in the past, and it's like, oh my gosh, that is why I cannot do my paperwork because arts things are downstairs and my mother's things are downstairs. And I never realized that before. I just thought, you know, I would go downstairs where my laundry room is and I would see all these boxes sitting there on top of my filing cabinet and I thought oh I'm going to have to get to that someday and one thing about that is when you have things on your to-do list it honestly it wears you down I think it takes energy from you because yeah. you always have something you have to do and that was always on my list so when you were saying about how you know think about things why do you have that sentimental attachment and I'm thinking you know I think it's time to get everything tidy and put in drawers and go through things finally. And then I can release that energy and cross it off my list and not have it weighing on me anymore. Cause that's a, that was a big thing to have that in my basement for years and years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how long had you had the paperwork in your basement? Well, my art's been gone for 20 years and my mom's been gone for six. So a long, long time, you know, Yeah. So when you talk about that idea of having things weighing on you, like to do's, right? And often we think of to do's mm -hmm. as, you know, buy milk, sweep the floor. Right. But this was, this was a lot bigger of a to do than that, right? Because mm -hmm. it was not just, well, I have to sort the paperwork. I'm going to have to shred mm -hmm. some of it. But was there any feeling of having to face your emotions in those boxes? Did you, did you um, feel some of that? Almost definitely, I know. And um, there is, when there's death at a young age or even an older age, like my mom, you know, there is a lot of grief that goes with that. And I know there's different stages in grief and you think that you've got, I mean, every day, sometimes when you hear a song or you hear something, you know, you can still cry, but there is a lot of emotional attachment, even to paper. <laughs> Yeah. And different things. I mean, it's a person's whole life. Well, my mom's paperwork specifically was when she was in a nursing home. Mm. So that was just, you know, a lot of paperwork and things like that. So there's all that, the feelings that you've had and, um, you know, happiness and sadness and mm -hmm. everything rolled up together. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a very much a purging experience. I sat down in my basement and I read papers, you know, and I laughed and I cried and, and then I decided, okay, does it get filed? 
or do I throw it out? So now I have like four huge bags in my uh, garage that I'm going to have shredded once we get back to normal and things like that. Wow. But it, it's very much like a cleansing, you know, and um, yeah, it's, it's uh, it was it was a uh, it was a wonderful and interesting experience if you can believe it. And like I said, I'm just so proud of myself that I accomplished it. Seriously, <laughs> you should be. You should so. be because not only did you tackle paperwork, but you you dealt with feelings that are difficult. You know, feelings mm -hmm. that related mm -hmm. to people who you loved, who you lost too soon in your life. Mm -hmm. And um, do you feel that it was a good time for you to do this? I know when people talk about grief, and you mentioned it a little bit, there are those, those stages of grief that people mm -hmm. go through. And how did you know, because I always tell people, uh, and I've, I've worked with a lot of people who have, have lost people and, and they have to deal with this stuff at some point. And mm -hmm. what I always say is, you'll know when you're ready. Right. There is no way that someone can say, okay, one year from now, you'll be ready or five years or 20 years or 50 years. Right. But I do believe that when someone is ready, they know. How mm -hmm. did you know that this was the time? I mean, it had been 20 years for your husband's right. papers. How did you mm -hmm. know that it was this past weekend? How did you know that that was the right time? Well, I think it's the pandemic, Rose. I mean, I am stuck at home. And I try to think of things to do to keep myself busy. And like I said, I walk 30 minutes a day and I'm doing purging 30 minutes a day. And I think with that, that helped me tremendously too. And then once I started, it was easy. I, you know, you accomplish something. It's, I think it's just the starting. Yeah. I honestly wish I would have done this years ago. But like you said, you know, for everything, there is a season and a time. Mm -hmm. And but this pandemic just said, OK, Judy, you have this extra time on your hands now. Do something with it. And so, like I said, it was a purge. And once you get started, it's like a, a, a ball rolling down the hill. You get something accomplished and you think, oh, my gosh. And then tomorrow we can do this 30 more minutes. And I put that 30 minute block on it because sometimes when you say I have to do something an hour, it doesn't get done. And I find 30 minute blocks work real well for me. So um, just a, a, a sense of accomplishment. And I know I, I wanted to say my friend Alicia, who is a, an admin in Germany, she says, I'm now her uh, minimalism role model because she has heard all my stories. And she's, <laughs> and that makes me feel good too. That's great. You know, that you're influencing others and, you know, helping others. So, well, but yes, I wish I would have done it sooner, Rose, but I didn't. And so now it's like, this was the time then during the pandemic. And I can look back, you know, and, and 20 years and say, this is what I did during the pandemic. Well, and it's a very good use of time. I think the interesting thing about this pandemic time or any time where we're given the gift of extra time is it allows us some of that open space to just sort of step back. Mm -hmm. and take steps towards something that's really important. I know that I've been working on writing a second book during this period. Oh, really? You know, and so I think that, that there's something about having that open space in our schedules that gives us time to think about what's mm -hmm. really important. What do we really want to work toward? And I also want to just kind of emphasize your process and the way you went about it by saying, okay, 30 minutes. I mean, we can do anything for 30 minutes. Right. You know, th that's not, you know, that long of a time to deal with paperwork. And how many of those 30 minute increments did it take you to get through everything? I went through everything rose in a week and I five days a week, I did my 30 minutes. But on the weekend, I would sometimes hit an hour or two hours, depending on how wrapped up I was. And I had more time, of course, yeah, because I wasn't working during the day. But so, so I say all told, so two and a half hours, probably, why don't we say five hours? It yeah. took me all told to go through my paperwork. You so. know, I sometimes tell people, um, one of the, the most difficult things for me to go through was my teaching supplies. I used to be a teacher. And when I left teaching, I had all the supplies. 
and I, and they were kind of like my your paper boxes. I would see them in my mm -hmm. attic and I would step around them and every time I looked at them I felt this absolute dread. Like I'm going to have to deal with those someday. And what it was, mm -hmm. just like you realized suddenly that this wasn't really just the paper, it was dealing with the sadness of the loss. Mm -hmm. I realized for myself that this wasn't those boxes of supplies, it was grieving the loss of my identity as a teacher. And because I'd left that career mm -hmm. behind to pursue something else, but yet I still wanted to attach to it. And so when I had that Oprah aha moment, like you mentioned, it suddenly made it very clear that if I wanted to step into the life that I wanted to live and the career that I wanted to have, I had to let this go. And so I always tell people it took me five years and one hour to let go of all that stuff. Five years to think about it and to dread right. it and one hour to actually do it. So for you, it took mm -hmm. you 20 years and right. five hours to right. let go. Mm -hmm. And I think if we think about it that way, we realize how much of our lives we can spend avoiding the thing. And, and that's not necessarily bad. We, we need to be ready, right. right? We need to come to the point where we're ready, but realizing that the amount of time it actually takes to let go of these things or to begin to tackle them is so much smaller than the amount of time we've probably spent dreading dealing with it. That is very true, Rose. Very true. Right. So I also, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, um, in terms of, of how you're feeling now, um, how do you mm -hmm. feel about yourself now that you have done this, that you've accomplished kind of like the, um, you know, the donkey on your back in terms of decluttering? Right. I am, like I said, Rose, I'm just so very proud of myself, seriously. And also it's very, very freeing. Like you feel like you can breathe. Um, you know, I look around my house and in my basement now and everything is so tidy and everything has a home and it's just it's more energy for you as a person because you don't have to do as much to your house and also just you know about the the good vibes in your house how everything has a place and a home and i suffer from anxiety mm -hmm. and i have noticed since i am more orderly in my house my anxiety has decreased it really has Wow. Because my, everything has its home and it knows where it's supposed to be. And uh, you kind of relax more. And I have read articles where you, if you have a real cluttered house, it adds to anxiety, you know. Yeah. So I do believe that that just, um, you know, my home is my castle. I love it. And uh, but it's just it's real. It has a it's a has a good vibe now. And like I said, it's just, um, you know, it has changed me. The decluttering has made me a better person, I guess. Yeah. Well, and, and a calmer one. That's amazing. And that's something that I've heard from, from many people. And that's something I've experienced as well, that mm -hmm. a lot of times we think, well, if we want to deal with our feelings, we have to just go inside and think about our feelings and meditate mm -hmm. on our feelings. And all of that is well and good. But another way to access some happier feelings and to open up some joy in yourself mm -hmm. is to get to those feelings via your physical stuff. Mm -hmm. You can create happiness inside yourself by decluttering the physical, tangible things you can see. And I think that's something a lot of us don't realize. People think, oh, simplifying is all about how your house looks. Well, it's really mm -hmm. not about that. It's about how you feel in right. your home. Mm -hmm. And you're just such a good testament to that. Mm -hmm. Uh, one last question I did want to ask you, um, in terms of your grief process, do you feel like this, and again, I don't, I'm not a psychologist, I don't know the stages right. of grief, but do you feel like this was a, a part of your grief process? Do you think that this helped you maybe as like a final step or one of the final steps of your, your grief? Mm -hmm. I think it does, Rose, because every time I would go downstairs, I would see those boxes out. And it, oh, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, here's my mom's box, Art's box. And by putting them away out of sight, so when I go downstairs, they're not always there. That, you know, it's sort of like um, finishing, wrapping things up, you know, um, that, you know, they're no longer here on the earth and they're in heaven, but it's like it's finished. It's, 
you know, it's time maybe to move on. Yeah. So that's pretty powerful, yeah. Judy. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's pretty powerful. Um, is there any other words of advice that you might have for people who might be watching this, mm -hmm. who maybe can really relate to you on a very mm -hmm. real level? They lost someone and they have baby papers or physical possessions, memorabilia, clothing from that person, and they feel that feeling in their house. Somewhere are the boxes of those things. And right. to walk by them or to see them brings those feelings of dread, of grief, mm -hmm. of sadness, of loss. And they know someday they're gonna have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. What would you say to those people? I would say don't wait 20 years. <laughs> I would say, you know, when you have time and just do a little bit at a time yeah. and just do maybe 30 minutes. And then when you get a self of self of accomplishment, then you can go on. But one thing Rose that I did after Art had passed away, I had um, some hats that I did give away to a homeless shelter that we volunteer at once a month, um, Surf City in Hamilton. And, you know, I never wear ball hats, but I gave those hats away. And the, I saw the very first time that a homeless man had my hat on. I said, oh, it really, it's a good looking hat. And he thanked me. And the next month he went back and he had that same hat on. <laughs> so that did warm my heart because thinking something I didn't use, somebody else can use. And they really appreciate it. So um, one man's junk is another man's treasure sometimes that's right that's right so um that would be my advice is is not wait and just you know give yourself time to heal and you'll know like you said rose you will know when it's the right time yeah. you will know when it's the right time oh that's wonderful and i love your process of breaking it down into a doable chunk of time whatever feels mm -hmm. doable so for some people that might be 10 minutes for some right. people, it might be just for five minutes, just open the box and just sit there, right? right? Depending on, on how small they need to make the mm -hmm. process to get through it. But mm -hmm. I know that the words that you shared today are going to help people and they're going to give people some hope and mm -hmm. some guidance to tackle um, probably one of the most difficult decluttering tasks, which is decluttering um, mm -hmm. things from someone who has passed on from our lives. So Judy, I just want to mm -hmm. say again, Thank you so much for doing this with me. I appreciate it. I appreciate you and all the positivity that you bring to my life. And I'm just so grateful. Bye, Judy. My pleasure, Rose. You're welcome. Take care. <laughs>